Okay, we're back with uh, another question from our astrophysics class. Um, he asked, uh, the ionization potential of a hydrogen atom in the ground state is, this is actually internal energy, but it's equal to 13.6 electron volts. So he's telling you it takes 13.6 electron volts of energy to completely ionize a hydrogen atom that's in the ground state. Uh, first A, he asked, what is the velocity of a free electron that has just enough kinetic energy to collisionally ionize a ground state hydrogen atom? So, <clears throat> in other words, you, you have this... Let me draw this a little bit better. You, you have a nucleus of a hydrogen atom. That'll be this. And it is in its first state, so the electron is in the n equals 1 orbit, if you like, around its nucleus. And you have this free electron out, out here, just out into space, not associated with this hydrogen atom. And it's moving at a certain velocity, and it's going to come in here, and it's going to... Let's just say it's going to hit. It's actually not going to hit, but if you have enough energy, it's going to send this electron flying out until it becomes a free electron as well. So this electron is going to come in, bounce off of this other electron, <clears throat> go along its merry way, while sending this other atom skyrocketing out until it is released from the atom. Therefore, you're just left with your nucleus completely ionized. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, so what do we know about this? We, What is the velocity? So we need to find an equation related to velocity somehow. We know it takes 13.6 electron volts in order of energy from our free electron in order to do this. So we at least have that. 13.6 electron volts well, that has to be our kinetic energy from the free electron. From the free electron. Okay, we know that, but what is kinetic energy? And if you're watching this, you probably know right offhand, one-half mv squared. Okay, so this, this m right here, what is this guy going to be? The mass? It's the mass of the electron. Okay, let me find my place here. Um, solving this for V, we can find our velocity because that's what we're looking for. What is the velocity of the free electron? So this is the velocity of the free electron right here. So that's going to be equal to square root of your kinetic energy. Uh, bring the 2 over. 2 times your kinetic energy over the mass of an electron. Um, I want to look at a little bit of a dimensional analysis real quick. Well, what is the dimensions of this thing right here? Uh, kinetic energy was given in these electron volts right here. So we have the square root of electron volts over your mass, which would be kilograms. So this would be kilograms. So, is that how we want to describe our velocity? Probably not. I've never seen anything relating to velocity that looks like EV over K. Um, what I would like to see is a nice little meters per second. And if it's under the square root sign, it's going to have to be meters squared per second squared. So, <clears throat> what's another way of describing electron volts? Well, we can describe them in the unit of joules. So, if we take the inside of the square root here, if we want energy described in joules over the mass in kilograms, well, what is this also equal to? A joule is a newton meter, newton per meter over kilogram, and what is a newton? A newton is kilogram times mass over second squared. Uh, you see where this is going? We have our kilograms from here. 
and we had another meter, uh, these cancel. This gives us our meters squared over second squared, which is going to be underneath the radical sign, giving us a grand total of meters per second. And so this basically tells us we want to convert this 13.6 EV into joules so we can get our nice little meters per second and everybody understand what we're talking about. So what does that work out to be? If we have 13.6 EV and what do we know about joules? We know that for every electron volt it's equivalent to 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19th joules which is going to be equal to assuming I calculated this right 2.176 times 10 to the negative 18th joules squeeze that in there okay so this 13.6 EV is the same thing as 2.176 times 10 to the negative 18th joules and that's what we're going to have to plug in for our kinetic energy here so let's rewrite this real fast your velocity of your free electron coming in and knocking itself into our hydrogen atom in order to ionize it is going to be equal to the square root of two times this kinetic energy the kinetic energy of the free electron times 10 to the negative 18th let's put joules over here let's do our dimensional analysis all of that over the mass of an electron well you can look that up from any table 9.1 times 10 to the negative 31st and that's in kilograms and as we just worked out joules over kilograms is the same thing as meters squared per second squared which will give us once we take the square root what we need meters in over seconds and upon performing this calculation the velocity of that little free electron is going to be equal to 2.187 times 10 to the 6 meters per second or equivalently you could call this 2187 kilometers per second and that's what is on the PowerPoint he gave us thank you dr. Park okay for part B what did part B ask it asked what is the temperature of a gas in which the average particle kinetic energy is just enough to ionize a ground state atom let's do that down here part B <clears throat> what is the temperature of the gas so we have to solve for T we know we were given kinetic energy and we know kinetic energy is one half m v squared uh, in a gas in a gas though this is temperature of a gas so we're dealing with a lot of particles so this is actually it's not just the velocity of the gas moving around it's all the little particles one half mass times the average velocity squared or the mean velocity so um, in order to get this into an interesting form there's actually a, a video on Khan Academy so I'll send you over to Sal for this proof but he has a really nice one in his thermodynamic section where he proves that kinetic energy is equal to three halves times pressure times volume and using an ideal gas PV is equal to N R T moles ideal gas constant times T well going one step further what is this N R T this is our good friend Boltzmann's constant so we can have kinetic energy is equal to three halves Kevin Boltzmann's constant times the temperature and we're looking to solve 
what is the temperature of the gas? So this equation happens to have temperature in it. We can solve this easily now. Remember, kinetic energy was, we solved it up here in joules. It was 2.176 times 10 to the negative 18th joules. And we need it in joules because Kevin's Boltzmann's constant is given in joules. So our temperature is going to be equal to 2 times the kinetic energy, which was 2.176 times 10 to the negative 18th, I believe. And that was in joules over 3 times Boltzmann's constant is 1.38 times 10 to the negative 23. Yeah, that's it. Okay, his constant. Uh, can you make a guess right here? We're solving for temperature. Got to get rid of this. Joules over Kelvins. Yay. So we're once again in the right dimension. I hate it when I'm not in the right dimension. Okay, this works out to be temperature is equal to 1.05 times 10 to the fifth Kelvins. And that is how to work the slide from, from week 5, Monday's class. See you next class.